So, you got any snarky comments to make about you too? No, not really. I mean, I don't like their music, but I'm not going to hold it against you if you do. Okay, I guess that's not snarky. I did have a teacher in high school who said that their original band name was FU2, and that we shouldn't like them because of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's fake news. Hmm. All right. Okay. You two is terrible! No, 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 no! Oh, it's new to Dev. All right. Welcome back. So, I wanted to go over the find command. Because it's so useful and it takes a little bit of getting used to and there are some tricky parts that aren't really that hard once you've had them explained to you, but if you're just starting out using the command line and you want to find files or things in files, you need to learn the find command. So <clears throat> I've got a little list of basic things just to get you started. If you want to find a particular file and you know the exact name of it, but you just don't know where it is, this is a perfect example of the command that you would want to use. So, this will search the current directory and all directories underneath it for a file whose name is progit.pdf. So, you can see, oh, that's exactly where that file is. No harm, no foul. <clears throat> now, if we are looking for files ending in a particular extension, right, we want to find all PDF files, then <clears throat> we can uh, use globbing, globbing patterns. And <clears throat> shell style pattern matching. So this is different from regular expressions, but essentially a star matches zero or more characters of any kind. So what that means is that we'll search the current directory, which I've changed to KiCad, for any files whose name matches something ending in a dot followed by the extension PDF. And you can see I've got some data sheets underneath this <clears throat> directory. Kind of cool. So <clears throat> what about, okay, let's look for files that end in a single character. So... This will search everything under this source directory for all the files in your bin directory on OpenBSD. <clears throat> and it'll search for anything, any characters, zero or more, followed by a dot, followed by any single character. So if we run that, we should get a lot of output. And you can see that all of these end in a single character. So one, C, one, H, Eight, whatever. <clears throat> now, if we're looking just for C files, C files end in C or H by convention. They don't have to, but that's the convention. So if we want to find all the C files, we can just do this command. <clears throat> so in between those brackets gives you, you can list all of the various characters that you want so, if you just want a single character and you want it to be a certain single character of several choices, that's how you do it. And you can see all of these have .c or .h after them. <clears throat> and non-c files, right, so everything here is going to end in something other than C or H. So we're getting a lot of man pages, uh, some .trd files. <clears throat> so that's kind of interesting. And then 
that's the basic stuff, okay? That's to get you started finding files. This next half of this file is a little bit more complicated. So, <clears throat> as always, you're going to need to read the manual page to have a full understanding. But <clears throat> the gist of the find command is that you do find uh, followed by the directory that you want to start searching in. So if you want to search the entire file system tree, just give slash as the path. And... <clears throat> Then there are certain primaries, which all of which return true or false based on some criteria. So the name primary returns true if the last part of the file name matches its argument. So <clears throat> that's what that primary does. And then there's also, this little quirk where if you don't use any of these primaries, then the given expression is replaced by the expression that you gave followed by print. And if you don't give any expression at all, it just assumes print, which is just going to list the entire directory tree. So, if I cd into a directory so that we don't get a ton of output and just do find like that, this will just list every file in this directory and any subdirectory. So there's no subdirectories here, but trying this, let's find a, let's cd into ksh. If we do this again, we'll see that we're listing everything, even all of the stuff that's in my .git folder. So, lots of stuff there. And <clears throat> you can combine primaries using the operators and, or, and not. So this, this is a list of all the primaries. And then you've got operators where you've got grouping, using parentheses, not, and, and or. <clears throat> and the and and the or do short-circuit evaluation. So if the first expression is false in an and expression, which you can simplify just by concatenating the two expressions, <clears throat> you... If the first expression is false, you don't do the second expression. Same thing for, you don't test for the second expression. Same thing for or, except in reverse. If the first expression is true, you don't test the second expression. So to give you an example of this, let's look at skipping certain di directories. So <clears throat> if I do cd into user source, and... Uh, Suppose that I want to skip looking at any directory that, or any direct, any directory whose name is lib. Then I can do this command. So what's happening here is I'm going to search for files, I'm going to walk the directory tree, look at every file in the directory tree. If I find a file or a directory whose name is lib, then I'm not going, if I find a directory whose name is lib, then I'm not going to go into that directory. Okay? And this prune command returns true always. So what's going to happen here is it's going to test this. If this returns false, then it's not going to do this second prune command, okay? And because this returned false, this entire first expression returns false. And this OR command will say, okay, all this returned false, so we need to do this command, okay? And then it's going to test and see if the name ends in .inc. Okay, so if we run that, 
You can see we get a lot of files that end in .inc, but curiously, we're also printing out files that end in lib. And the reason why is because this find command did not find one of these primaries. And so it enclosed the entire expression in parentheses and did print. So what happens there is that when <clears throat> this returns true, right, name is lib and prune always returns true, it doesn't do the second part, and then it does a print at the very end. So what we need to do if we just want to print the ones that end in .inc is add a dot .print or add a print to the end so that it will print just these files. And so if we run that one more time, we'll see at the very end we don't have that lib file. Okay, what else? Executing commands on the files that you have found. And this is maybe the most important part of the find command. So let's suppose that we want to find every file that ends in C or H, so the C files, and we want to count the number of lines in those files. This will do it. So <clears throat> this is a particular, there are two forms of the exec command. You can either run the exec command for every file that matches, which might be kind of inefficient and might not actually give you what you want because this word count command, if you give it multiple files, it will sum up all of the lines in all of the files that it found. So <clears throat> the difference essentially is whether you end it with slash plus or slash semicolon. So ending it with slash plus will find all of the files that match first and then execute this command with all of them on the command line. So <clears throat> let's run that. <clears throat> and you can see that at the very bottom, it does it gives you a total, the total number of lines for all of the C files in the kernel source code for OpenBSD. So you can see that this says there's about 2 million lines of code. <clears throat> now that's not exactly right <clears throat> because, and I'll show you by looking at all of the output. So if we do a less of WCL and then I do a regular expression search for a number, if I can type, there we go, you can see that it printed off in, in an intermediate state a total. And that's because if you look at the very bottom here, it says that <clears throat> Each set is limited, so the total number of files that can be listed is limited to no more than 5,000 path names and is also limited such that the invocation of utility does not exceed arg max. So you can only handle like so many arguments to word count. The system won't let you put an infinite number of arguments to utilities. So what happens is <clears throat> this will give you a certain, it'll stop and rerun the utility at a certain point. So <clears throat> you can see that actually the total output is closer to 6 million. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind when you're running these commands if you're going to have a lot of arguments that get found. <clears throat> okay, let's look at skipping every directory but some. So this is a little bit more complicated <clears throat> and 
I think it's important to sort of cover this, though. And <clears throat> this command, so you can see I've got a grouping here. So it's going to test. We don't want to search anything in the arch directory. Any path. So the path is different than name. Name just looks at the last component of the file path. Path looks at the entire path. So anything that is a subdirectory of arch, not going to be included. Okay? It's not going to return true. But, so or, if the path is a subdirectory of arch and AMD64, this is going to return true. So we're only going to look at paths that are not under arch or paths that are under arch but under arch AMD64. And we're also not going to look at things that are subdirectories of dev, okay? So if all of this, if this is true, and we're not a subdirectory of dev, then we're also going to look at files that end in ch, capital S, or lowercase s. So this capital S and lowercase s are assembly files. So these are files that are written in the machine language of whatever machine you are writing the assembly code for. And then we're going to execute word count for the number of lines on all of those. And <clears throat> this will not overrun because most of the source code for the kernel is in the device drivers. But if you're looking at the actual kernel source code, you can see that there's significantly less lines of code about a little over half a million. So almost, well, yeah, 584,000 lines, roughly. Now, <clears throat> that's a, a useful case. And then the last thing is searching within found files. So find looks at file names or paths and does things on them. The grep family of utilities, of which there's fgrep, grep, and egrep, look within files and search for regular expressions within files. Except fgrep actually doesn't look at regular expressions, it just looks at regu just looks for straight up strings. So you can't use regular expressions with fgrep. But it's a lot faster. It stands for fast grep. <coughs> And this is useful because if you have the source code for the ports tree, if you put the ports tree on your system, within that ports tree, <clears throat> in files whose name is DESCR, the description of packages that you can get on OpenBSD. So if we want to find within all of the description files for packages that are available on OpenBSD, we want to find package descriptions that have the word video in them, then <clears throat> this is a little this functionality is not available in a regular OpenBSD command. But we can do this and we will find every file that has the word video in its description. You can see there's quite a few. And I've passed this dash L option to fgrep, which means just print out the file name if it matched. So this is going to search all of the files that are that match description, and if they have the word video in them, it'll print it out. <clears throat> now, suppose we want to do something slightly more complicated we can use extended regular expressions. So here, I'm still passing the dash L flag, so we're just going to print out the name of the file that matched, but here I'm using an extended regular expression, which is, and I'm also passing the dash I flag, which is going to ignore case in its matches. And so what we're doing here is matching any file that has the word video followed by any number of characters, zero or more, and then the word player, and we're ignoring case, or the word player 
followed by anything and then video. So <clears throat> what this will do is it will look for any descriptions of packages that contain the words video, player, video and player. And this is going to take a little while because it takes a little bit longer because it's searching a more complicated regular expression. But you can see here, these are all of the files that have that functionality or that have those words in the description. So now, okay, we're in this use case scenario, we're looking for a video player that we can use on OpenBSD so that we can, you know, watch videos that maybe we've downloaded or created. <clears throat> And if we want to list, actually put all of the descriptions to the screen so that we can read them and figure out which one of these packages we actually want to download, we can just do a simple for loop. So we'll do for <clears throat> found file in, and then we'll do a command substitution. So for found found file in and then all of this as a command substitution do echo and then we'll put a bunch of X's just so that we can have a visual indication of when we're starting a new file and then we'll echo the name of the found file followed by a semicolon and then we will cat that description to the screen. And this will take a little, little while again. But then you see, okay, here's our X's. Here's the name of the file. So Ogle is a DVD player. So there's our word player with support for menus and subtitles and fairly good audio slash video synchronization. So there's our player or followed by video. And here's the description. Right, And you can scroll up and see all of these <clears throat> video players that exist on OpenBSD. <clears throat> mPlayer is a media player, right? mPlayer is the video player that I use personally. Minitube is a native YouTube client. With it, you can watch YouTube videos in a new way. <clears throat> so lots of, lots of descriptions for various packages that match what we want out of them. So <clears throat> hopefully this video helped you and you can use what's in here to find files and find files that have certain things in them and do things with those files and <clears throat> generally just make your life a lot easier. So if you like this video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. In either case, leave a comment down below letting me know why. Also, leave a comment if you've got any questions, criticisms, or concerns. And as always, if you want to get notified when I make new videos, hit subscribe. Thanks. Peace.